Yeah. Gorilla, you gained a lot of fucking weight. Yeah. I got fat. Leave me alone. Hold yeah, on. did you get fat? Oh, my my wife likes chubby. Well, you're fitting the bill. Yeah, Thank your you. Wife's happy. You got. Uh, you Artie's a... my hero. <laughs> what happened to you, man? <laughs> what happened? What do you mean? You he used fat. to be really into yeah. his physique. Uh, yeah, dude, I just out. let go. I didn't give a shit anymore. <laughs> it's nice to fucking eat what you want. I tell you that. Take off, right, your, Artie? Take off your sunglasses. Let yeah, no, my eyes are all swollen. I've been working since 10:30 last night. What are you doing? Thanks. What are what you, you doing? Been doing? <laughs> Even with all that drinking, he's hyper. Yeah. Oh, I'm on the air. I'm hyper. He, and he scares the shit out of me anyway. So. Oh, Jimmy? No, you. Me? What did oh, I do? You just, I still have anxiety dreams about you. What, what do you mean, anxiety dreams? <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm running around and you're screaming at me and nothing goes right and it's horrible and I wake up in a cold sweat and it's like yesterday, you know? It, it still happens up to this day. <laughs> you were my intern. You smell like a bar rag. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, I just got off of work. Look, I got a bottle opener right here. I was bartending all night. You were my intern for how many years? Seven. I didn't know you kept a diary. Yeah, nobody did. Yeah, Gary said he saw the diary. It looks like a four-year-old wrote it. Well, Pretty much. Uh, same thing. Yeah, That's G Steve Grillo. Gary, I think, <laughs> has a theory that Steve might be like either learning disabled or... Well, oh, yeah, I got dyslexia coupled with um, attention deficit disorder. Yeah. How long what happened you to just being stupid? College? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Well, you know, back in the day when I was a kid, food. I was stupid. Right. But now I have a, a, an excuse. You have a diagnosis. Back then, they were like, um, Steve's a little slow. Right. He's, right. He shouldn't be in this class. And you were primarily in charge of my baked potato. Yes. And uh, you were the guy every day, 8 o'clock, you had to bring in the baked potato. <laughs> yes. And that always was a problem for you, right? No. I right. loved it. I lived for it. So Steve today has agreed to read from his diary. And this is great. How often would you write in your diary? Here's five years, Robin. Wow. Wow. <laughs> This is I love Carilla. He's one of my favorites. He's even one before, of my favorites. No, I love but Marty. even before I got I uh, I came on here, you know, I never worked with him, but I used to love when you guys featured Gorilla. You know, yeah, the, the, Gunga the, Den. the impressions and <laughs> him trying to explain his way out of things. And it never worked. He's drinking an enormous Budweiser. I've right never now. seen a can I have a problem. Leave me alone. Yeah. All right? Are you an alcoholic? No, I'm drunk. I don't <laughs> go to meetings. Oh, an alcoholic goes to me. Yeah, no. I just like to drink. I, I was working. I figured I'd come in with a little buzz. It'd be fun for you guys. Yeah, all right. Well, and, you know, I, I waited so long. I lost my buzz. I figured I might as well start drinking again. Somebody said it was funny listening to Gorilla read his own diary because he apparently can't even read. No, no what he writes. No, yeah. not at all. Not he at all. He was so funny because even as uh, an intern, he used to say that he... Loved to write. He was writing scripts, you know, and we oh, had yeah, him come should, in with that. Oh, so, see, here's that the time. thing. I got a gold mine sitting here. Like, you should hear some of the shit that I wrote. I didn't know what the fuck I was thinking. <laughs> but it's brilliant. <laughs> and before, I, I'll, I'll read you a couple of passages, wet your palate, but I want to talk about getting my show back on the air. All right. All right well, you know, why don't we hear some of your diary? I'll give you, I'll give you a little taste, but <laughs> you're going to get hungry for it, and you're going to want the rest, because i got five years here, pal. Ralph said to me, he would tune in, if we would give Gorilla five hours to read all of his diaries, he would well, just listen, tune in and listen. I'll read you the shit about, you know, me being here, but Japanese. everything else, you, you know, that, that's shit all limits. There's in there, too, huh? What do you mean, the uh, other shit? It is off limits. Why? Uh, well, it's because about people that probably don't want to hear me talking okay. bad about them. All right. Uh, ex people, family people, stuff ex people, like that. <laughs> former ex people, former people, former people that are no longer not... in my life that I don't want to talk about. Oh. And mm -hmm. it's really probably brutal. I was really nasty. I was a nasty prick. That's for sure. All right. Well, in your book, you're allowed to do that. Um, well, what have you got picked out for us today? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> let me see what I can find here, Robin. Um, there was one point where I left the show. And it was like the first time that I was going to come back on the show. Uh huh. And I, I, it was like one of your birthday shows right after I left. Okay. And I, I, I called Gary thinking I wouldn't have a problem getting on the birthday show. I called Gary and he was like, well, I got to call you back. I was like, call me back? Wait, it wouldn't be like, okay, no problem. So Gary calls me back and he's like, all right, well, oh, well, if you're going to come on, you have to sit with the whack pack. I was like, wait a minute. So you were really insulted. I, I was like, I didn't think I belonged to sit with the whack pack. Right. So to, to, to redeem myself, at that time I was standing in on The Sopranos. That's for, what they said, by the way. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at the I time understand. you were standing on The I Sopranos. I don't want to sit next to the gorilla. It's a friend of the boy. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> uh, read, read the paragraph. Come so, uh, all right. So listen. Let's hear from I, I walked in, right? And I redeemed myself by bringing the kid from The Sopranos and, and me and Tyler, Stephen Tyler's daughter. And I walked in, and I saw you and Robin at the podium. You didn't see me, and you saw me. And you went, oh, look, there's Gorilla. And you pointed, she pointed to you, and she, you went, 
and you didn't see me. You went, oh, who cares? <laughs> and you blew me off. Alan, right. He didn't, and then, hear the, Alan, he didn't hear this. He saw you mouth the words. Who I know what I saw. I don't care what. If God came down off the cloud right now and said that's not what he said, bullshit. You mean okay. you didn't hear me say who cares? You would argue I with know God. I saw you. You know what you I went, said. You went, oh, who cares? And you do your hand like but this. But you didn't and hear. And it. You went. Oh, and really? You know, and then, well, let's hear your passage. Oh, well, right. I gotta, I gotta, right. oh, hold on. All right, now we gotta hold find on. it. I gotta find it. Well, you got all those yellow slips in there. What are I they know. For? I don't know what year this shit is. I don't know what you want to listen to first. <laughs> I can't. Joke to I you. can't even. I you can't brought even, it up. I did the you brought now. it up. I didn't no, bring it up. No, you brought up the story. Yeah, we think. asked you what you wanted to read. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I told him three specific passages to have read. I swear to God. Who ha ha? Birthday show. Here we go. Okay. I was sitting there with the star of one of the hottest shows on TV and the daughter of one of the greatest rock stars ever to live, who is also the sister to one of the biggest movie stars. Um, in the past, if I sneezed, I, I got um, attention for it. I was part of the show, and for six and a half years, you might think uh, he would uh, take... Um, see, I can't even read my handwriting. Look at this one for you, Go ahead. He would... Uh, <laughs> but for, for some reason, homie just ignores me. Call me. That's, That's you. you. When he started talking to Robert from The Sopranos and didn't even acknowledge the fact that I was there, <laughs> check out how cool this kid Robert is. The fucking kid was like, hey, Howard, I'm, I'm sitting next to Steve Grillo. He's my stand-in. Gary made some wisecrack about, oh, yeah, that show business, but I, 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 he just steamed right past it. Then, fucking, <laughs> then, then the fucker just goes, oh, and moved on. That, to me, was a fucking kick right in the face. Oh! Now, Steve, let me tell you something, because this is something you could never understand. Of course. That was nice. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> when somebody has a radio show. Somebody, you. And I'm doing particularly a birthday show. It is very confusing to I wasn't asking you to suck my dick. Just, hey, what's up, Grillo? No, Steve, Although that wouldn't it wasn't bad. about you. That I would devote time to you another time, but it was a big show. It's like if Jimmy gets, I don't know, Robert Plant to walk out. He's not going to go, hey, there's the guy with Robert Plant. On his primetime special, he's not going to be dealing with his uncle. Listen, right. I, that's fine with me. I'm not mad no more. <laughs> Who he's knows? not mad but no more. But you have this thought that, like, you see, everybody thinks that, like, I'm supposed to, like, fall apart when you when I see you. Oh, no. I don't think oh, that. I, I, worked I was in the enough. middle of no, doing I, a show. I, I saw like, Tommy Mottola come up to you one time. You didn't fall apart for him. Of course well, not. I don't think you would do it for me. But be, it's but not a question like, of that. When you're doing hey, a show. Up, dude? <laughs> dude, when you're doing a show. Did I'm he not, sitting not there. even say hello to you? No, when you he said, who cares? When you, you were there. Did you hear me say, who cares? I saw no. you. Oh, you read my lips. Oh, I read it right. clear as day. The fact but that I'm not mad at you, bro. It's okay. Now listen, I'm just explaining it to you. You okay. think it's easy. I'm sitting there trying to entertain millions of people. You couldn't say hello? No. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Uh, the audience I doesn't want to. You ever I'm listen not talking even on the air. You didn't say hello to him off the air. Probably not. Not at a birthday show. I'm completely distracted. Well, it was the first time I had seen you since I left the show. Yeah. So to me, Who no, cares? no big hug, nothing. Who I didn't, would I care? Told you, I didn't want like love. I just a little, hey, what's up? Yeah. It would make me feel good. What else do you have to read for us? Um, Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, remember that time I sent you that note on Lotus Notes and I asked you not to read it on the air and you did? All right, go ahead. I just found that. What was what the was note the about? Note? It was when I was deciding to leave the show. Hold on, give him a half hour. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. It was when I decided to leave the show. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, I sent you a note and I was kind of confused and I thought maybe I can confide in you for like one second. All right. And what was <laughs> and, the note about? I was like, dude, I'm confused. I know you, you probably want to read this on the air, but please don't. And uh, you didn't. I knew when I read it that... Uh, yeah, he got yeah, for a lot of shit. Why, I got right here. why are you unprepared? Go ahead. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> last week being destroyed, as I have been for the last hundred months or so, over career purposes, of course, I wrote a letter to Howard on Lotus Notes. It basically expressed Jesus. how fucked up and confused I am, and I asked him for advice. Does he and smell? It's a big burp. The big beer burp is terrible. <laughs> I'm Jimmy. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm keep sorry. going. I don't okay. mean keep to going, yeah. it, Please don't. Thank you. This is my moment. Uh, and also asked for uh, him to keep it between us. Now, I'm sure if I'm reading this 20 years from now, or if someone else is reading it, you're probably saying, what the fuck? Are you stupid? You didn't think that he would read it on the air? Well, um, I, I'm a, uh, I, I, I thought for one fleeting moment in some way, then out of desperation, that I thought he might not. 
But I take a step back from that now, and uh, it's his job to take that on on the air. And as you can expect, no fucking way he read it. It was brutal, embarrassing, as and uh, as any other time. My eyes were wide uh, open, and <laughs> <laughs> it was opened up a little bit more. And I'm going to do everything I can to move on. I would actually give you an hour to read your diaries on the air. Oh, I got much more. If I take yeah. time and figure yeah. out what I wrote, it'd be interesting. No, don't even take it. Don't even take any time. No. Julie said these are the exact diaries that you find in a serial killer's home. <laughs> oh yeah, no, but I'm, I'm not. What is the third passage? Oh Jesus! Uh, let me see. We'll find something I mean, else. Yeah, but I, I don't know. He, like, it's not like us. we set this up. You just said. Uh, Did uh, we talk? I said. This is my exact words. Read the passage about being made at the birthday show. The passage okay. about a lot of All right, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Hold but on. Why do you act like Gary didn't set this up with you? This is two weeks ago. He didn't talk to me this morning. I talked to you this very fucking morning. <laughs> All right, all right. Today at work was fucking crazy. Stuttering John was at Boston University chasing officials. So we have one intern at the office, tall Jen and me. So I'm doing the phones, taking care of Howard Stern, taking care of a guest, getting music for Howard Stern to play on the air, and whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck ups Gary, uh, whatever the fuck, whatever the fucked up Gary needs. I'm taking, which means I'm doing, doing fixing all Gary's fuck ups, I guess. I'm taking, I, I, I'm talking no stop from 5.30 to 11. No fucking break. Did I get a little pat on the back? A thank you? How about a nice job? I don't think so. But have I ever asked for that? No. It's just the fact that I put up, it's just the fact what I put up with every day. And um, I got into this, uh, hold on. Everything I got into, what I do there, all I ever feel is like I just got there because they feel bad for me or they just want to make fun of me. So I was saying, like, uh, you sound like, you know what, Robin's yeah. right. You sound like a dude that I'm surprised didn't go around shooting everyone. <laughs> oh, that's why I love. You're all bitter and everything. No, I'm not. I'm I'm not bitter. It's the best time of my life. But it was so good you had to leave it. It wasn't good anymore. Uh, when did it go bad? When did it go bad? It went bad around that time with Lotus Notes. I just like uh, <laughs> when I read your notes to me on the air. Yeah, it was somewhere around there, and I just didn't feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't feel that anybody had my back. And, um, I didn't feel like anybody had my back. <laughs> Three Lotus Nodes, I was golden. Post Lotus Nodes, I was bugged. Hi, Fred. I miss you. I got to tell you, hearing you read your diary, uh, you sound like the retarded Anne Frank. In a way, I think you're onto something. Oh. Extremely retarded, Aaron Frank. The Nazis you... are gumming. Do I get a thank you? <laughs> Rich, no. Do I get a thank you or a pat on the back? No. Rich, you're on the air. Do I get a thank you? <laughs> How fat did this guy get, man? He sounds like he's breathing bacon fat out of his nose. Yeah, he got yeah. more or less. Yeah, I'm about 30 pounds overweight. He's not that fat, but he does sound like a pool raft that's leaking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the leather I'm wearing. I'm sorry. He's starting to sound like Dominic. He's also oh, like I got, but it's allergies, man. My nose is all stuffed up. My eyes are tearing. Oh, oh, no, what are you wearing? He's wearing a 1970s brown leather $18 jacket. And a uh, dark... He's, he's, you're, you're, he's punctuating his sentences with like a... Big what is that dark... shirt he's wearing, Jack? Yeah, Darth Vader t-shirt. Uh, I'll take it off for you. Yeah, Darth Vader t-shirt. Uh, 30th, 30th anniversary, Memorial Day weekend. You're married? Yeah, yeah. man. Wow. Yeah. She's hot, though. A lucky lady. Yeah. She got a crush yeah. on Artie, which kind of scares me. Look at you. You got a whole thing. <laughs> she, she likes going. chubby guys. She likes Artie, me, <laughs> chubby Alec Baldwin, chubby Don, uh, what's his name? Dominic Barber, you're on the We're air. We're not Alec Baldwin, chubby. <laughs> girl, <man. laughs> let's, go to, let's go to Dominic. Dominic, you're on the air. I was to get the thousand for Jeff. I put up two thousand and the limo to bring him right to the hospital. Who? <laughs> Who? What is that? He just ate the phone. Hey, he's listening to the 7.30 hour somewhere. Hey, Alan, um, yeah. one of the other promises I made to Steve was that he, you know, he, he had done a show here that didn't work out. He sort of got bummed out. So he wants to, he has a new show that he wants to pitch, although I haven't spoken ah. about what it is. Well, no, I just think, hold on. My, my first demo show, which everybody seemed to like, including you, thank you right, very much. Right. Um, my first guest was Jody Foster. I had little Marty call in from the uh, the Black Pearl and, and you know the Pirates of the Caribbean. What I are you a, talking I took about? A, my, talking my, about my, a show. my demo radio show that so I did. So who cares? So who cares? Everybody seemed to like it. I think I have a great idea, and it just fell to the wayside. You interviewed Jody Foster? Yeah. yeah. You got to hear minutes. this. You got to hear this. 
he we gave him a radio show to do. Uh huh. A demo so, show. A demo show. So he met he works on movie sets. So he met Jodie Foster and he got the interview. Oh. It was maybe the worst interview ever. Yeah, oh, he no, didn't it wasn't. Find out anything. Play it again. Let yeah. Jimmy decide for himself. Uh, he, he's Jimmy. never interviewed Jodie Foster and either of you, but I did. <laughs> Give me a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and she knew I was doing your radio show. She I knew it was going to be on your channel. She did it for me. I had no problem with that. Well, I, it was. A, uh, listen, now, I know I needed work. Show I know I needed work, but I think I could do a damn good show. Give me a shot. What happened with those hair plugs of yours? Oh, well, I had them taken out by a very talented doctor, uh, Dr. Bernstein. Yeah. Because uh, the first doctor, which I won't mention his name, yeah. he really screwed him up. This doctor took him, uh, took him all out, and uh, I'm very happy. Oh, okay. Dr. Bernstein, he's in Manhattan. This motherfucker got a hair plugs, and then they were so bad, he had big holes in his head. Right. Then the the doctor fixed it for me. I Good. just got a couple left to go, and uh, but Dr. Bernstein in New York, Dr. Bernstein Medical, top, top notch. Okay. Well, I'm very happy because I, I was very. I that you have a whole sleeve there now. Oh yeah, my whole back. Tattoos, tattoos. You have uh, my, your whole, my whole back, back is. Well, I just got tattooed uh, on Thursday. Uh, so, uh, my, my, I'm doing my whole back. What? What is it? You look ridiculous. Oh, it's sure too many, I do. It's too many tattoos, and it's already, I'm already. I'm already screwed. You know what am I going to do? I mean, what, that why, was one why, of my are favorite you, things. Are to you talk being about. sarcastic? No, I just I enjoy it. It's like sort of like a hobby. Too much. What's on your back now? Show us. You what don't want to see do? my back fat, trust me. What did you do to yourself? Oh, Let I did see. a lift oh, up the, your shirt. The, let's give uh, Needles, uh, uh, my boy, a prop. Hey, no, keep going, keep going. Yeah, it's too much tattoos. Uh, you're not going to like this. What do you got? What no, do you got on your back? What the fuck did you do? Uh, Spider-Man? Uh, uh, show him the front. Show him the front, too. Like is that Spider-Man? No. It's and like a, a big monster? And your tit? If you got time, I'll show you. You look silly. Okay. Stop. It's better than the clatter. <laughs> it's enough. Yeah, where is the clatter? But uh, well, at least it's, uh, the guy's You don't talented. want to see that? I see boredom. What do you mean? I, I think you're bored. I think you can't find anything to do. Yeah, give me something to do. I'm oh, telling you, tattooed. you're so busy with the tattooing. If you were busy hobby, and enjoying yourself, you wouldn't be tattooing. I like enjoy that. getting tattooed. What's so hard? No, about I understand that? that, but you're going too far. It looks silly now. You look silly. Oh, look out! Okay. Another beer burp. He's uh, burped about five times. Give me some water, please. I didn't ask for this. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm trying to help you. What? I don't know if you want to play, but if you go to Gary Preview page two, you can either listen to the Jodie Foster interview or. It was his review of The Departed that killed the show. No, the like you, great. Listen, I I I I got a uh, a lot of work to do, but I I I'm in the right I'm in the right fucking lane here. I got a great idea. What is your idea? I I want to have like a regular douchebag guy reviewing movies, not like these pompous assholes that are reviewing movies on TV right now. All right. It's not the same. It, like, I'm not that guy. Why would I want to listen to some douchebag that's Mr. Prim and Proper telling me not to go see Spider Man when I'm gonna like it because I'm a comic book guy and I want to see that movie. You don't want to. Like, you don't want to hear that. You want to hear from a regular guy, and that's what I want to do. I want to have. Like I want, my, my idea was I took Radio Man to go see Monster House 3D. Took like a homeless guy to go see a little kids movie. Right. I have transvestite friends that I like to go see like you know an action movie. You know, saying like I want to take someone outside the genre of a movie and then have them go re see it and then review it. Oh, it's on preview page two in yellow, right at the bottom. All right. I have a lot of there's a lot of different things. I have a buddy that I want to do, host it with, and then I have someone that, that that's going to come. Jimmy, you're an, an idea guy. What do you think of well, this? Well, I think I, I like the idea, and I, I think obviously you're a natural broadcaster, but I think that I think the way to go is you review the movie loudly. You hear him breathing. I know. He, I have he a, I have asthma. Ooh. B, my nose is stuffed up from allergies, uh, and then C, I'm fat. So what else do you want? Uh, I'm saying you review the movie in the theater while it's going on in a loud voice. <laughs> okay. That could be something good. That'd right? be good, yeah, and laugh real loud. Uh, yeah, yeah, and breathe. <laughs> Here's Steve doing his review of The Departed, which caused us to cancel the show. Oh, well, how, uh, don't play Jodie Foster or anything. Go ahead. All right, I'll play that, too. Hey, this is Steve Grillo on Howard 100 News. I am going to review oh, today this gonna The right. Departed, directed by Martin Scorsese. This, my friends, is a sausage fest. It's got Mark Wahlberg, Matt Damon, uh, who else is in that? Charlie Sheen, no, Martin Sheen. Scratch that, it's not that much of a sausage fest. And, uh, oh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Guys, if you're going out on a date, I would not bring your wife or your girlfriend because this movie is nothing but uh, eye candy for the ladies. 
the the script is very uh, very well written, it's very well directed by Martin Scorsese. But this is the uh, um, Scorsese's version of the Irish Boston Goodfellas. It basically takes place in Boston, and uh, Jack Nicholson plays a uh, mobster, and um, well, he infiltrates the uh, the special forces inside the Boston Police Department. Uh, this movie is excellent. I give it three out of five potatoes. And um, girl, girls, uh, you'll enjoy it by yourselves. But me, too much, uh, too much cock. See you later, Steve Will. <coughs> Let's 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 get back to what you had me do here. This wasn't part of the, the demo show I did. This is a, a thirty second review, All right, a sixty minute so review that you that I wasn't allowed to have a script. Jimmy, what did you think of it? No, hold on a second. What is it, Jimmy? I yeah. had no script. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to practice. Oh, that wasn't scripted. No, really? <laughs> no, just understand something. I wasn't allowed to practice. I thought and they that said, was hilarious. They said go, I love that review. Go, and that there was a review, but that wasn't part of my radio show. I understand show. why they did that because it's better to have you be a disaster than to have you be mediocre. Okay. But right. how, how about yeah. this? I'm a disaster on my own radio show. <laughs> okay, but I also have a lot of more inter here couple, is Steve I interesting here things. Here is Steve interviewing Jody Foster. <laughs> you be the judge. All right, you're listening First to the Grillo Show. This is Steve Grillo on Howard 101. Um, right now, I got a huge, huge breaking story. I got a guest that is on the line right now. I've been waiting for her. She is an Academy Award winning actress, Miss Jody Foster. Mm. Jody? Mm -hmm. Jody, what is there? What's Everyone wants to know what you're wearing. What I'm wearing? I'm wearing the same outfit that I saw you when I was walking on the street. I know because you never change, but hopefully you don't smell too bad. But the funny thing was, my wife was kind of funny. She goes, she saw you Saturday night. We were at the rap party for the Brave One, and she was like, Oh, no. She said, wait a minute. That's what Jody was wearing when we saw her on the street. <laughs> she, I was like, she was, right. are you wearing that long flowy dress with the blue top? You're ab you're no no I actually wasn't I was wearing something else I wasn't wearing that Oh no you're right I was I was I was Okay That's I'm my, guilty My wife couldn't stop laughing she goes she made fun of you and she wore the same thing <laughs> but, Oh well but I, and I was also I you might have missed my karaoke uh did you miss my karaoke? I hope you missed my karaoke. I, I, I didn't. I fortunately did not miss your karaoke, Jody. <laughs> I thought you were very good, but I, I think Jill outshined you a little bit. I think she did too. Well, you know, she does it often, and I picked. I picked some tough ones. I mean, Janis Joplin's kind of hard to pick. It's it, you know, There's a lot of screaming going on, and and uh, you know, she's the only one that can make that work. Yeah, you pulled it off. Uh, you pulled it off, though. But uh, can we talk about what we're working on right now? Sure, sure. Yeah, well, sure. We're, we're working on the brave one right now, and since L listen to me. <laughs> this is like insane what I'm listening to. Uh, but still no one knows what the hell you're talking about. I know, you know what? Uh, Who's listen. Jill? Who's Jill? Uh, listen, there's a lot of things I can explain. Well, I understand. Daughter, right? I, you're I, I doing an interview. Listen to me. I, I, listen uh, to me. My first interview. What, you know what your problem is? You don't listen. Uh, you're right. I'm you're 100% right. You're doing an interview. You're talking about Jill. You're talking about... No one knows what the fuck you're talking about. Karaoke oh, all of a sudden comes in. I, I, but it was Jody Forster. Who gives a shit? Right, but you actually uh, made Jody Forster not interesting, which was, I thought, difficult to do. I it wasn't easy. I found it fun. <laughs> I, I, like, I like every... I was the one who proposed Steve getting it. Listen, yeah. trust me. I like well, everything about it. Through my trial, through my trial and error, you will have something to goof on. I'm worried about Get, you. What? A, you're overweight. Okay. B... I'm listening to your breathing. This is not good. Uh, yeah, I have asthma. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, thirdly, <laughs> with the tattoos, yeah, looks like like you fell asleep somewhere drunk and little kids drew all over you. Well, not yet. Don't, don't, don't insult my boy Needles. He did a good no, job. No, listen to me. Needles, I'm sure, is a terrific tattoo artist, but yeah. you're going crazy. Even Needles would yeah, tell well, you, slow uh, down, uh, Steve. Well, uh, even no. needles would say it. <laughs> but uh, my mom would say that. She doesn't even know that I've gone this far. It looks like you fell asleep and kids drew all over Well, because it's not done yet. You mean you have to go home with long sleeve shirts on all the no, time? No, she knows about the sleeve. She don't know about the back. Oh. She, she do now. <laughs> Listen to me. You want another shot with a radio show? Yeah. Jimmy says it's okay, then I'll do it. Don't put that kind of pressure on the guy I'm sitting right next hour? to him. Would you listen to this, Jimmy? It does it have to be an hour? I, I think it's worth a no, try. No, I'm saying half an hour. Half hour? Half hour. What do you I, think? I think it's worth a try. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Campbell. Yeah. Right. I mean, the and breathing Jimmy. alone. <laughs> Just for the breathing. I'll, Every, I'll, I'll use my inhaler next time. And this time Jesus. we're incorporating the diaries. Yeah. Well, that, okay, we'll work. You get more diary, I, I get, get more show. You know, make a great pair is is Stephen uh, and Riley Martin. I think would be a. <laughs> there could I be think Riley there. would really like you a lot. Uh, yeah, Riley. All right, I'll give you one more show. You get All on. All right, cool. But can thing. I do it on the air this time, not a demo? Yes, okay. on the air. All right, cool. I'll rock your world. I'll talk to Tim Sabian about it. Okay. And we'll have a show for you.
to do a half hour, and we'll see how you do. Heavy you... breathing with Steve Gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Tim? Uh, deep thoughts or heavy breathing? Yes, Tim. Hey, Howard, how you doing? Hey, I'd rather listen to Eric the Midget for an hour than listen to this fuck for one minute. Let's do that, That's too. That's the stuff I miss. Bring it on, pal. <laughs> uh, Randy, you're on the air in New York City. Yeah, uh, this guy Grillo, he needs to get whacked. He needs to be taken care of. You don't like him? No, man. Get him out of the, get him out of the circle. Just, right. just you, know, you, know, you know what to do. All you right. know what to do. Uh, <laughs> thank you. you. All right, let's go to High Pitch. Eric wants to say hi. I'm sure you have a friend <laughs> no. in him. Yes, High Pitch. Hello, you're a fan. Oh, okay. There's nothing to say to that, really. Sorry. <laughs> you got to wake up with yourself. I'm okay. Yeah, Jimmy's favorite, uh, oh, Jimmy. the biggest fan. I'm doing well, thanks, Hi Pitch. <laughs> Does he call your office? <laughs> he masturbates watching the show sometimes. Oh, sweet. Are he you still you. doing that? Oh, uh, no, not now. Okay, really? Good. I'm in the Kentucky Fried Chicken watching your show every day. <laughs> so fat. Oh, but hey, you know he's got the gout. He's got and he's gout. still eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Do you know he has gout? <laughs> I didn't. I had no idea. No. He uh, his weight and his eating is so disgusting. He has gout. Are you drinking a lot? No, not really. I cut out the drinking. I'm drinking water. I'm drinking juice. No more soda. Is the gout juice. getting better? Okay. I'm drinking I juice. I also wear my special shoes sometimes. But do you realize, like, I don't. The only reason I don't have gout is because I I walk a little bit during the like I I have some sort of some activity. activity. He's eating and doing nothing, like a dead person. Like right. that's when how... I walk, my back hurts, my feet hurt. Aren't <laughs> you in the, on the verge of being evicted from your apartment? No, I'm working on that. But you're being evicted. That's why you have to work no. on it. No. No. All right. Well, thank yeah, you, Hypers. Yes. Listen, I have a show idea for you. When is the last time you paid rent? <laughs> six months ago. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, if you don't pay I, I, your rent... I have a good show idea for you. You figure if Grillo can get a show, anybody can. <laughs> Now it's opened it's up the floodgates. <laughs> it's a good show. How about Marianne and I do a cooking show on Sirius? Oh, right, i got to get out of here. <laughs> All right, Gorilla, it is good seeing you. It's and good seeing I you. Appreciate I have you. no hard feelings, whatever I want. What were you writing in the diary today? I stopped today? writing a while ago. About Well, I if you were, us. what would you write about today? Today was here? a very good day. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up drunk and I got fat. <laughs> I would told me it looks like little children drew all over me. <laughs> uh, my needles is going to be very unhappy. All right, so you got a half-hour show. I want you to prepare. Right. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to come on. i got a buddy that's going to be my co-host, and i got a, another friend oh. that's going to come. i got I got everything taken care of, okay? Yeah. It's going to be good. You're going to like it. You're Not too much of a co-host. Just you got to talk. Yeah. I understand, but I need someone to play off of because he's a no, sick... No, you don't. He's a sick bastard. Trust me. You want to talk Those to guys him. interrupt too much. No. Did I, he I got my boy. with people before? I don't think so. No, I had my buddy Big Reg come in and do some stuff. I, I you know, I also I call him... I, I call him Marty for... Little Marty. He wants to come on. He want, Little Marty wants a show. All right, all right, good. All right, listen, we'll, we'll, we'll get right on that. Yeah, right now. Steve, thank you. Thank you for reading some of the diary. Thank you, it did wet my appetite, and I'm okay. going to give you a half-hour show. All right, cool. All right, and uh, let's take a break. When we come back, Robin is going to do the news. Jimmy's going to still be with us, I assume. Yes, I'll be here. Yeah, so. I know you're kicking my ass. No, you're out. You're out. You're out. Yeah, I'm out. Grillo has a plug. I think it's right in front of you. Oh. All right, let me plug it. Steve Grillo is the marketing director for Two Hotties Haircuts in Las Vegas. T O O Hotties. Haircuts in Las Vegas. For more information, go to myspace.com backslash two hotties. How'd you get that job? Uh, MySpace. It's a really good friend Let me of mine finish the Vegas. plug. And then yes. uh, one thing at a time. MySpace.com backslash two hotties <laughs> Las Vegas. MySpace. Listen to this fucking <laughs> I didn't give it. Uh, I didn't MySpace.com backslash two hotties Las Vegas. Huh? All right. I didn't do that. And Cabin Fever Bar and uh, Mr. Biggs on Wednesday night. Oh, you got a lot of clients. Yeah, you? yeah. I'm a whore. And uh, the plum. Mr. Biggs in Hell's Kitchen? Yeah, man. I love that place. Come on down Wednesday night, the Russ Brunelli party. All right. Cool. The what uh, party? I don't understand a word I know you, you don't, but uh, just, uh, everybody, say, the people who are out there. What is the party? My buddy used to throw a party at his restaurant, Russ Brunelli. Now he's throwing the party at Mr. Biggs in, in Hell's Kitchen. Is Jill going to be there? Jill? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I want you to tell Big Reg what I'm about to tell you now. Yeah. I love You're out. <laughs> we can't uh, do ver gorillas without even going to the bag at the bar. <laughs> uh, it's like no one even knows what you say. Everybody say again, who is that. party? 
<laughs> My buddy Russ Brunelli's party. Russ Brunelli. Mr. Russ Brunelli. Russ Brunelli. I missed the Biggs on Wednesday. Russ Brunelli. Russ you think Brunelli it was one Mr. word? Biggs. We're going to the Russ Brunelli party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Russ Brunelli and Mr. Biggs. I didn't want to see you. See like what a, I'm saying about show. your show? Nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. I'll make sure that happens. How about I'm going to go to the Russ Brunelli show. All right, good. Nobody knows what you're talking about. That's fantastic. Are you missing a tooth now? No. Let me see. Smile. All right, okay. They're all still there, nice and strong. All right. <laughs> All right, good for you. All right, I'm looking forward to this. Good, me too. All right, you, you'll be you'll, you'll you'll be a little different. You'll think a little different. Watch. Mm -hmm. What? You'll be a little different. Now, right? <laughs> you'll be a little different. It'll be you're a little better be than the last one. By this program. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I'll have another show. Watch. What will I think after I hear this half hour show? God, this is brilliant. I can't wait to destroy really? him on the air. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I like that. Uh, All you, right. you have fun beating the crap out of me, and I'll give you something to beat the crap me. About you know like what you'll have something you'll to have beat something. the crap out of me about. All Russ right. Benelli. I'll give you plenty, plenty of Russ Benelli. <laughs> Mr. Biggs. <laughs> Mr. Biggs. Russ Benelli. Mr. Biggs. He was doing on Tuesday. Now it's on Wednesday. And yeah. Mr. Biggs is down house Gigi. Uh huh. <laughs> Wait, I have no idea. You know, Fred, you hit it right on the head. Yeah. That's my boy. Go ahead, Fred. I, I have no Let idea. Loose. Mr. Biggs and Russ Benelli in the house Gigi. He said, "Oh, do you know that guy? He's down there. We hang out with Chili since Monday by the bar. <laughs> Look at me. I got a can open in my bag, my <laughs> This is my boyfriend. I've been working all night. What the I love you, friend. I know. I don't know. <laughs> Chapter yeah, two. No. <laughs> Nobody knows what it, you know. What? That's why people. Did you actually? Gary flips me that, off. That's why people go crazy from you. Did you what? put uh, dates on the? Oh sure. Because you, you never read the dates. Mm. That's part of reading a diary. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Ron. There were dates there. But you should read. Well, that. some of the interesting stuff was, you know, in the middle of a whole I bunch of. I don't care. Of, you just read the date. Okay. And the, and no dime, problem. And dime goaded. <laughs> to me, the date isn't that important. It is. I like 1022. And then you could read another entry, right. but you have to give the date. Okay. Well, listen, we can all do this right after my second show. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Steve. January Thank you, Howard. 4th, I appreciate 1987, it. Steve. My hair fell out. Uh... <laughs> uh. Uh, thank you for the appearance. Uh, my, I look forward to your Monday, show. Monday, okay. May 14th, I discovered I have very strong teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me eat the uh, can opener. <laughs> uh, and very weak breathing. I would tell me I had no teeth, but I have teeth. They're strong teeth. Listen to me wheeze like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there's songs written about it. I can hear Steve breathe. That's I can he hear me like, wheezing uh, now. He sounds like one of those accordion boxes. Yeah, right? yeah it is. Wheezing. Yeah. Uh, all right, Steve. Thank you very much. Will always this squeeze box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a squeeze box. Right after these words.